We all love cocktails. We all love making cocktails or drinking cocktails. When we make cocktails at home, we want to have a well-stocked bar. In this episode, I'm going to show you the last word on how to stock your liquor cabinet. Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from the Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. Now, as I mentioned, building up your own cocktail bar, your, your liquor cabinet, if you will, can be a daunting task. I mean, just imagine having to go to a liquor store and pick up that stuff. What do you pick up? What do you not pick up? How much do you spend? Believe me, it can get expensive. Quite often when I talk to people, they want me to give them a shopping list. Things they go to the liquor store and pick up that they think they should have at their bar at all time. Rum, brandy, orange curacao, vermouth, all that stuff. The problem is, it's expensive and you don't know how to use it. What I constantly recommend to people is using a shopping list is the wrong way to go. What is a far better way to go is build your liquor cabinet up one drink at a time. You've all got a favorite cocktail, a cocktail you like going to bars and having all the time. Find the recipe for that one cocktail. Find, find a cocktail book that you think has a bunch of recipes in, in it. This particular book has a lot of the modern recipes in it that you can re refer to. There's not much more information other than recipes, but it's got a lot of recipes in it. Find your favorite cocktail in this book. Go to the liquor store, buy what you need for that. If you want to spend a little bit extra time, check some other cocktail books out and see if they have the same recipe. If they have a slightly different recipe that needs slightly different ingredients, buy those ingredients too for one cocktail. Then make that drink up. Have it one night. Make it up the next night. Make it up the next night. Make it up multiple times. Play around with the recipe a bit. Try different ratios. Because one thing you notice if you look at some of these cocktail books, quite often the recipes aren't quite the same. Sometimes the ingredients are in slightly different ratios, or sometimes the ingredients are completely different. Take something like the Mai Tai, for instance. Sometimes it has pineapple juice, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it has grenadine, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it uses a couple different types of rum, sometimes it only uses one. So look at the different recipes, figure out what's going on, and seeing if you can find the recipe you like the best. After about six, eight months of doing this, besides having a lot of fun, you'll end up with a really well-stocked bar. And to top it off, you know a cocktail to be made with every single bottle there. That's the important aspect in making a cocktail bar. Do it slowly, do it gradually, and train yourself at the same time. To get started, we're going to do a cocktail called The Last Word. It's a fairly old cocktail, but chances are you've never heard of it before. It's a drink that very few recipe books even have. It was found by a, by a friend of mine, Murray Stenson, at the Zigzag Cafe, when he was taking and looking through an old cocktail book that he happened to have on his counter. It uses chartreuse, maraschino liqueur, gin, and lime juice. Let's get started. The ingredients are in equal proportions. So it doesn't matter how much you use, as long as you use equal proportions. If you're going to use half ounce, use a half ounce for everything. You want an ounce, do an ounce for everything. I'm going to take and do this with an ounce of all the ingredients. So there's one ounce of Plymouth gin. One ounce of maraschino liqueur. I'm using a jigger that holds up to two ounces here, so I pour both of them at once. You might want to take and pour them separately because if you make a mistake on the maraschino liqueur, you've got to throw both things out. An ounce of chartreuse. An 
And finally, an ounce of lime juice. Anytime you use juice, you should always use fresh juices. I'm using an antique juicer that I bought on eBay a while back that I think works absolutely fabulously. We'll cover the tools in a later episode. And there's an ounce of that. Now we add the ice. You notice I didn't have ice in my shaker to begin with because if I had taken a while putting all these ingredients together, the ice would have melted in the water. So now I'm putting ice in and shake it up. When you shake, it's also important to make sure you shake enough. The drink actually should feel cold to your hands, almost to the point of hurting as you're shaking. What I hate seeing is these bartenders just kind of go plop, 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 and that's it. Maybe one or two shakes. And here we have the last word cocktail. Maybe it should be the first cocktail you experiment with in building your home bar.